All right. Well, hello, everyone. I hope that you are doing well. It is a Wednesday afternoon, 1.40 p.m. and uh, on this June 5th. And I'm coming on at a different time this week. Normally, I come on at either a Friday or mainly Saturday, but uh, I'm coming on a Wednesday. I'm going to be out of town uh, this weekend, be ministering up in the uh, western New York area and uh, Alba, New York, and also Grand Island, New York. And then June 14th, ministering in Beaver Dams, New York. So if you're anywhere in that western New York area or near Corning, New York, uh, would love to see you. And so I'm coming on now, and I want to encourage you and pray with you. And I want to, uh, I know most will, will watch this later, but if you have a prayer request, go ahead and put it in the, uh, in the comment section. We'd love to see where you're watching from. Uh, just type that in there. Just type in amen anything, okay? But just type in... Uh, would type in amen if you agree, but uh, uh, would love to see where you're watching from. Again, you can put it, your your testimonies if you have a praise report, your um, uh, your prayer requests, and we're going to bring them before the Lord as we do every week. So, uh, but I want to encourage you today from First John chapter three and verse uh, twenty, and also Romans chapter eight verse one. I'm going to read Romans chapter eight and verse one first. Where the Apostle Paul, writing, he said, There is therefore now, now, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And and you know what? That truth of the fact that the truth that there is no condemnation, and that condemnation means there's no death sentence over our life. It refers to a final verdict. And get this: when we were not saved, we were when when, a, it, when we were when we did not know Christ, when we were in darkness, uh, we were under condemnation. We were under the law of sin and death. But now that we've accepted Jesus into our heart to be our Savior and Lord, there is no more condemnation. There is no more death sentence over our life. We have uh, we've gone away from the heavenly courtroom. Okay, we, there, we're not in the courtroom no more. No more. We've gone into the courtroom and we have been justified by faith in Jesus Christ. And I want to, I just want to encourage you today because that's what I have felt in my spirit just in praying about today and what to bring you is that so often you know in our in our life we can go through life and and we can we can. We can go through things and we forget this simple but yet powerful and transformative truth that there is no condemnation to us. There's no death sentence over our life. When we fail the Lord, and and we, we, we should never make excuse for our sin or we should never make excuse for living in in offense or living in discouragement, we should never make excuses for those things. God has compassion towards us, and he is so much more merciful to us than we are to ourselves or to others. But when we we go through those times, we can forget this, again, powerful and, I say, transformative truth because it transforms us, that we are justified. We We have been declared righteous in the eyes of God. You are right today in the eyes of God, not based on anything we've done, but based on what Jesus has done. And his work is finished. And he took the penalty. He took the death sentence that we deserve that was on us. And he took it upon himself at the cross. And he condemned it. And that's in Romans chapter 8 as well. He condemned our death sentence. He put a, he put a death sentence on our death sentence. And we're no longer under the law of sin and death. Even with all of our flaws, even when we fail the Lord, again, that's not for us to have a license to sin. But even when, it's not a question if, it's a question when. Even when we fail the Lord, we're not not 99% not condemned. No, no, we are still justified 100%, and there still is no condemnation over our life. What happens is that we put condemnation upon ourselves, our flesh does, and the enemy, Satan will, 
and people will. Most of the time, it's us. We put that mindset of, oh, man, I, I'm, whether we verbalize it this way or not, we, we turn guilt over our sin, which there is always guilt attached to sin, but it's not a guilt that ends up in a death sentence. A, it's a guilt, okay? It's a guilt as a child ha- is guilty, Okay, it's not a guilt as a sinner is guilty. It's a guilt as a child is guilty. That's where conviction of the Holy Spirit comes in. When we're convicted by the Holy Spirit, why do we feel sorrow? Because there we, we're guilty of sinning. But it's not a guilt that, that turns into a death sentence. We do that upon ourselves. And Satan will do that. He turn our conviction of sin that the Holy Spirit brings and turn it into condemnation. But I want to encourage you today that God's not condemning you. He's not putting that death sentence over your life again. He's not bringing you back into the courtroom and saying, hey, you know what? You're going to have to go through everything all over again. You're going to have to pay for your sins. No, no, no. No, Jesus paid for your sins. And all he asks for us to do is to acknowledge that, to repent, to ask him to forgiveness, for, for, to forgive us, and he will. 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we bring that to the Lord, and we, uh, we are in agreement with God over our sin, and we are in agreement with God that the blood of Jesus makes us right. You know, I want to read another verse out of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 20, where John said a powerful, powerful truth in 1 John 3 and verse 20, when he said this, he said, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows all things. Oh, <laughs> What a, what a powerful truth. Again, if our heart condemns us, and that's a first-class conditional clause in the Greek, that word, little word if, and it's assuming that this is going to happen. Okay, It's not a question, again, really of, of we think it is, like in the English, of if possibly it may not ever happen. No, no. It, it's going to happen those times that our heart that our heart condemns us not god okay but we do and the devil does but when we find ourselves in those place in those times when we where, where we just feel condemned we just feel as if there is no hope and that's where you know the difference between condemnation and true conviction of the holy spirit with true conviction of the holy spirit there's always hope attached to it but with condemnation, there is no hope. And the only hope, only it's a false hope with condemnation, self-condemnation. Again, it doesn't come from God. It comes from ourselves, and it comes from the devil. The only false hope that comes with condemnation that we, is this. We can be good enough to erase the, the guilt of our sin. That's a lie. That's a lie, and that's, that's self-condemnation. But John said here, if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows all things, for he knows all things. God is greater than our heart. Oh, I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for that. You know, I was in a, uh, I was, uh, in a, in a church service recently. We have services on Tuesday, as you might know, at Covenant Church. It's our, quote, midweek service, and uh, uh, and so I was visiting another church on a, on a Wednesday, and uh, a, a church that I'm familiar with, wonderful pastor, and um, and they had a, we had a time of prayer uh, after afterward where people, and the pastor just encouraged the people, the Spirit of God was there, and he just encouraged the people, find a place of prayer just for a few minutes, and let's just pray. So pe- some people were kneeling down in, the, in their seats, I, which I did. Some people came to the altar, and I was kneeling down and, and just praying, and again, the presence of God was there, and I, and I get this, I, I, I sensed strongly the Holy Spirit speak to my heart, and he said this to me. He said, I hate 
your sin. I hate your sin. Now, me just verbalizing those words, they can sound shocking, to even to maybe you that they're listening right now, watching this now or later. I, the Holy Spirit said to me, I hate your sin. But get this, when, when, the Holy, when I sensed the Holy Spirit say that to me, yes, I felt conviction, but at the same time, I sensed his love for me. That it was said out of love to me. And, and some, again, are, are that gossip, that gossip in, in people will wonder, well, what sin does the Holy Spirit hate in you, Brother Bob? What is it? That, you know what? There was not a specific sin that, that I felt that, I, I mean, I could name a lot of different things, but there was not one specific thing that I felt the Holy Spirit was laying his holy finger on. He was just saying, I hate your sin, but I could sense his love in it. I could sense his love for me. You see, that's the difference between condemnation and conviction. Condemnation is, I hate your sin, and now there's no hope for you. You're, 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 you've been, you're cooked to the curb. God's kicking you to the curb, and you're going to have to pay for your sin. You reap what you sow. And, and yes, we reap what we sow, but the, the enemy will use that. Our own flesh will use that. Ignorant flesh will use that to heap condemnation on us and get us overwhelmed with discouragement and think, you know what, God doesn't love me, or yes, he does, but he has to. He's got to love me. And all of that is a lie. Get this, God hates your sin, but he, but he loves you so much to tell you that and to offer hope to you and to me that we don't have to stay in our sin. We can, and it's not that we're staying in our sin, or if it is a habitual sin, you can come out of that. And the and the and the easily besetting sin that Paul mentioned in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, he said, lay it aside. You don't have to kind of wrestle it off as if it's some kind of straitjacket on you. No, even if it's a bondage, you can just simply lay it aside. Why? It's because it's been detached from you and I because we have been crucified, buried, and resurrected with Christ. We know through our understanding and through our faith in what Jesus has done for us, we can, we can realize that we're no longer in relationship with that easily besetting sin. It doesn't belong to us. So we can just simply lay it aside. Lay it aside. That's, that's it. Lay it aside. It doesn't belong to us. We have no relationship to it. And so whatever sin that is today with you, you don't have a relationship with that sin. You have a relationship with God's love. You have a relationship with God's righteousness, with the victory of Jesus, with the grace of God. Yet that's what you have a relationship with. You don't have a relationship with sexual immorality. You don't have a relationship with being overwhelmed with discouragement. You don't have a relationship with being offended and, be, and, and, and resentment and bitterness and unforgiveness. You don't have a relationship with that. You can lay it aside. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so, again, again I just want to encourage you that there's no condemnation to you today. And if you sense that death sentence, again, I'm not talking about guilt again. There's guilt always attached to sin. But it's not guilt as a sinner because we're no longer in that place no more. We're a child of God. And just like a child, okay, can be guilty of doing something wrong, it's not, okay, it's not the guilt that's attached to a courtroom. A parent doesn't bring, you know, I, the parent, when a child doesn't make their bed, doesn't bring that child into some courtroom and say, okay, you're, you are now sentenced to death. No, no, no. Is there discipline involved? Yes. But it's not courtroom discipline. It's parental out of love. That's Hebrews chapter 12. He loves you today. He cares for you. He, the Lord is your shepherd. And in him you lack nothing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to end there today, and I want to pray and, um, and just pray for the needs, pray for the physical needs for healing, 
We're going to pray for this country. We're going to pray for Israel. We're going to pray for uh, this election year. We're going to pray for the spiritual needs, that, that, that spiritual eyes would be open. I'm praying for myself, myself included, that we would have receive a fresh baptism of the mercy and the compassion, the love of God. And we would, receive a fre- we would receive a baptism, I'm using that figuratively, but literally in the sense, we would just be immersed with revelation knowledge of what Jesus has accomplished for us, and that we are in him, and that there is no condemnation, that we can walk in victory, we don't have to walk in discouragement anymore, we can walk in his love, walk in hope, walk with joy, and even be tired in our body like I am right now. We can be tired in our body, but yet still be full of joy and have his hope and walk in victory. We don't have to let the tiredness of our body lead us into sin. Well, I'm tired. I'm just going to, no, no. Don't use that as an excuse. Don't use sickness in the body. Don't use tiredness as an excuse. Well, I just need a break. Don't use that. Well, I need a break as an excuse to get to go on a flesh, you know, vacation, F- indulging in the flesh. No, that's a lie. You and I, regardless of how we feel, we can continue to walk in victory with no condemnation. Hallelujah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray now. I'm going to pray for the spiritual needs first uh, because that's the most important thing. Our spiritual needs, again, our eyes would be open more and more and more to the victory that we have in Jesus that we are crucified with Christ. And yes, Bob, revelation knowledge of all he's done for us, revelation knowledge of the great love he has for us. I'm reading out of 1 John chapter 3, and and I just looked down at 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. And so behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. God loves us today. He loves you. He cares for you. So let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for revelation knowledge for those who are watching now and later, that God, our eyes, our spiritual eyes would be open to see the victory that you've given us to see our new identity that we have in you, that we're not an old man living, Lord, now, nor, Lord, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I pray that, Lord, you would open our eyes more and more. Our eyes would be open, that we would allow our eyes to be open to the, again, that we've been crucified with you, that we, are, we, we have no relationship with sin anymore, whether it's the sin nature, the flesh, or anything in the world. Lord, we're, we, don't, we don't have to give in to temptation, but Lord, we can, we can walk in victory in the name of Jesus. Lord, let our eyes be open. Lord, help us to walk by faith and not by sight, not by feeling, but walk in dependence of you, Jesus, and all that you've done for us and who we are in you. And we claim it right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, for those who maybe or have bondages of sin. I pray that those bondages would be broken today in the name of Jesus. We declare it, Lord. You have given us victory. You have given them victory right now. Come on, you can claim it right now. Lord, I thank you for victory that you've already given me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to walk in that victory. Help me to walk in that peace. Walk in your joy. Lord, I pray for bondages to be broken, for the captive to be set free right now, the mind, body, and spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, any drug addiction, let that bondage be broken in Jesus' name. Nicotine addiction, be broken in Jesus' name. Pornography addiction, be broken in the name of Jesus. Lord, every greed addiction, every selfishness addiction, be broken in the name of Jesus. Every bondage to fear and anxiety be broken in the name of Jesus. For you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And we declare it, we receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I want to pray for physical healing. And again, as I say every week, this is not a this is not meant to be an observation thing. This is meant to be a participation thing. So pray with me. And I'm encouraged to hear sometimes people would comment or send emails or whatever, and they'll say that, 
you know, watching your videos, Brother Bob, just hearing you pray, it helps me to learn how to pray. Because a lot of people don't know how to pray, and they did, they they get confused and just they get scattered in their in their thoughts, and they they think that they don't know how to pray. And get this, we can pray with confidence, as Hebrews chapter four says, we can come before the throne of grace boldly with confidence, not with timidness, not with oh, I what do I say? You know, no. You can be honest and open before God. You can be raw with the Lord. Be respectful and loving, but raw with the Lord. You can tell God how you feel. If you love the Lord, tell him that you love him. That's prayer. If you're discouraged, you can tell God. If you want victory over it, you want you want you can tell the Lord. Just tell it in the name of Jesus. Tell him, I should say, in the name of Jesus and know that you're coming before a throne of grace. So I'm going to pray for physical healing right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up those right now with infirmities in their body or in their skeletal, Lord, bones and I, or their mind, the brain. Lord, I pray for healing virtue to flow right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every person. I pray for Nancy. I pray for Jerry. I pray for Eugene. Lord, I pray for Arlene, Lord, I pray for others in the name of Jesus. Judy, Lord Glenn, I pray for others. Lord, every person, you know their name, and I pray for them in the name of Jesus for healing virtue to flow, your strength to flow from head to toe. Come on, claim it right now. Lord, I receive your healing touch in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us rest, health, and strength from head to toe in the name of Jesus. Help me to sleep better. Lord, I pray the Lord, Lord, those with sleep problems, Lord, they would sleep well from this day forward in the name of Jesus. And Lord, anything that would hinder that, I pray give us wisdom and understanding about what it is that we need to do to sleep better and to be receive better health. Lord, I pray that you would give wisdom and bring healing in the name of Jesus. Bring strength. Let strength flow from head to toe. And I pray, God, for healing of every disease of the body. We declare healing over every disease, over cancer, over kidney disease, over skin disease, over liver disease, over uh, mental uh, issues, Lord, bondages in the mind. Lord, we declare healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. We're going to pray for our country. And uh, just there's so many things to pray for our country. But uh, this election year, pray that, that God's will be done. And uh, I just want to pray for, uh, for our leaders, as the Bible says. Uh, pray for corruption to be exposed. Pray for Donald Trump. Pray for President Biden. And uh, some would get upset at that. No, 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 no. Don't pray for him. Get out of here. I'm, yes, we ought to pray. Yes, pray for the current president. Pray for the next president. Pray for their eyes to be open. Pray for corruption to be exposed on every level. And that God's will be done. And that righteousness would reign in this nation in the name of Jesus. So let's, let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for this nation, and we pray more than anything that eyes would be open to you, Jesus, to the gospel, Lord, that you would raise up laborers in the harvest field, that, Lord, we would, we would, that we would declare and reflect the gospel, the truth to this world in the name of Jesus. We lift up our leaders, as your word says. We pray for corruption to be exposed, and we pray for righteousness to reign. We pray for our political leaders that their eyes would be open, that they would be saved. And Lord, those who are saved, we pray that you would strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for uh, President, former President Trump, and I pray, God, that this trial would be reversed, that it, all the corruption would be exposed in the name of Jesus, and that, God, that you would help him, I pray, in, the G, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we lift up, Lord, uh, the church, the body of Christ in our country and around the world. We pray that God, our, the church, that we would come back to our first love. We ask that, God, you would have mercy on us. Do not give us what we deserve, but we ask you for mercy and your grace in Jesus' name. 
And Lord, we thank you, Lord. I pray for those watching around the world, and I pray that you would give them strength in their respective countries, that you would move in their countries, move in Mexico, move in Canada, move in the UK, move in Africa, move in Israel, move in Central and South America, Lord. Move in Australia, in New Zealand. Move in Russia. Lord, move in Germany. Lord, move in, in Australia. Move in the Far East. In the name of Jesus, move, O oh God, in every country by the the power of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Lord, move in Iran. Move in Saudi Arabia. Lord, there's believers there. Lord, we ask you to move in those countries in Jesus' name. And let there be a harvest of souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, praise God. I want to pray uh, for Israel and just pray that, that as the Bible says, the Lord would bless them and give them protection and give them victory in this present conflict. And more than anything that Jews, Jewish people would come to know Jesus. So let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we lift up Israel. And in this present conflict, we pray for victory over Hamas and Hezbollah, Iran, and every enemy that Israel has. We pray, God, that the hostages would be released and that, God, you would strengthen Israel and those enemies, not just Hezbollah, not just the, Lord, the, the terrorist group, not just them, but, Lord, even other countries, even, even people within the United States of America that are against Israel, that, God, that you would just reverse it in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, that you do not acknowledge the cursing of of the enemy on Israel. For you have blessed Israel, and what you have blessed, no man can curse. And God, we pray you would bless Israel. We pray for their protection and for victory in this present conflict in the name of Jesus. We pray for peace in Israel in Jesus' name. And I, Lord, I pray for those believers that are in Israel that you would strengthen them and that there would be a harvest of souls in Israel before the rapture. That, Lord, it would, that the body of Christ would rise up even with within the nation of Israel, and that there would be many Jews that would come to know you there and around the world, we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to stop there today, but I pray that you've been blessed. And, and uh, again, I, would, I, would, I, I covet your prayers this weekend as a minister in, in western New York and, uh, and in Corning, New York, that's the central New York area, and uh, in the day, in, in this weekend, and uh, June 14th, and um, and I'll be back for Father's Day and sharing with me ministering here at Covenant Church uh, during those services, the, the couple services that I'm gone. And so, uh, but God bless you, and have a wonderful day in Jesus.